So let's have a look at the file menu in XMind 2013. If you have any questions, I'm going to try and answer them quickly. There's just some more things where I'm going to do different videos, some other videos to go more in depth because some of the things here are fairly straightforward and other things will take a little more explaining. But I'm going to try and talk a little bit, a little bit about everything. If there's another video that we need to go more in depth, I can go ahead and I'll, I'll, I'll do some more videos on this as well. Now the first thing is I'll go from top to bottom on the list and we'll work our way down, okay? First thing is the new commands. You can have a new control N or you can do a new blank map. The difference is this. If you want a new map and you want to hit control N or, or you can go to the, the file and hit new as well, you can choose from the default ones, ones you've created and also ones that maybe you've downloaded off the internet. That's for control N. If you just want a, the new map that uses your default settings, you can set a default template, control shift N and we get a brand new workbook. So that's a little quicker. If you understand that you, if you only want the same thing, the, use the same template, control shift N or going into the file menu and choosing new blank map takes you right to a, uh, a new map right away. So keep that in mind, consider that. The open and close functions. They're all fairly straightforward. Open, control O. The open home map, the beautiful thing about XMind, and I've got my main map, I call mine my home map main. You can call it whatever you want. But if you have a home map, it's always open. So every time I open XMind, that home map opens up. If so for some reason you've closed it, you can you can go ahead and hit open home map and it'll open up for you. Open recent, again, very similar to what it sounds like. These are neat little features though as far as closing. If you want to just close the map you're currently working on, control W. If you want to close all the open maps, if you say you have several workbooks that are open, you can close all the workbooks, control shift W. So again, just some neat little things that maybe you don't know, maybe you're going through and having to click everything. This, if you have several things open, makes things a little bit quicker. As far as saving goes, a neat feature is just saving a new revision. And really all it means is you, when you're saving a new revision, it's like regular saving, it's control S. But when you hit control S, or if you go into the file menu and you choose save new revision, it'll save a spot right there so you can go back to that point later on in the, in the future if you need to go back in time. In any case, saving new revisions from time to time is always a great idea. Save as, very similar to any other save as you have. The save sheet as, what that allows you to do, and I'll, I'll just show it to you as well, let's say by you click on save sheet as, it allows you to save this particular sheet as a new workbook. So if you're working on something else, I've just taken the one sheet that I had, I'll just show it to you here, took this sheet, it's a sheet right here, I call it the file menu, and now I've turned it into a, a workbook on its own. That's a great way of when something gets really large, you can spin it off into its own workbook. Or if you're sharing, instead of sharing an entire workbook with, workbook with people, if all they need is one sheet, save the sheet as, and then fire off the workbook to them. And that way all they're getting is that one little piece of the information that that's all they need. It'll save them time, it'll save you grief in case you're oversharing or giving them information that they don't need. Save template as, that, that's pretty clear. If you have something set up where you've gone and you've worked on the color scheme and, and maybe there's something you always want to have these prompts that you always want to set out, you can save it as a template and that way when you go in and you hit, you hit control N, it'll save as a new template and you can choose that again and again and again. The editing history is really just useful if you've deleted something and you need to go back. That's pretty much the only time you're going to use it. I mean, I'll need to go back to the other one workbook because this is a brand new workbook so there won't be any editing history. So we'll get in here, we'll delete that, go down to editing history, we're going to hit the file button, editing history, and we'll see a little something of this particular workbook. And you can see where you can go back to wherever you've been, choose one of the selections, and you can either go back in time, you can view it using the commands up here, or you can delete them as well. If you don't need that many, you can start going back and deleting some and just it helps keep your file size in, at a nice reasonable level. The reduce reduce file size button, this is new to XMind 2013, and I haven't played around with it enough, so I'm going to say, before you go ahead and do it, it's probably not going to be a big deal. Before you go ahead and try it for the first couple of times, just make a backup. That way you've got something where if anything happens, you know, lightning strikes, you can go back and take care of it. But um, I haven't played around enough to, to let you know as far as how much it reduces or, or anything else along those lines. The next link down is to encrypt with password. Self-explanatory. This is only XMind Pro, so if you have even XMind Plus, it's not going to work. But obviously lets you password protect your maps. And the last function is print. The import export, that's a huge topic all to in, in itself. But I'm going to go through, I'll click on them really quickly and show you around a little bit. But I'm not going to go too in depth on the import export. I'll just do a separate video on that because there's so many different uh, cool exporting features on this. 
First of all, we'll check out import. You can see there are, there are four formats you can bring in. One is the older version of XMind, FreeMind, which is just a free version of another program, MindJet, and also Microsoft Word. And I believe you need to have a paid version of XMind in order to import from Microsoft Word, though. The export is actually really, really cool. They give you tons of options. We'll go in. There are document options, and they're okay. The HTML, actually, I find works fairly slick. You can export something as an HTML document. This is usually a, this is one of the free versions, the free things you can export to. Export it as HTML, and then you can import it into a, into a Word document or something and try and move things around a little bit. When you get into exporting to Word and to PDF, they look okay. It really just gives you a quick snapshot of the overall mind map, and then it gives you a bunch of just lists of everything you've gone through. Saving as images is a great idea. You can save as you know, regular images, a PDF, or the SVG. If you have a huge mind map and you have it saved as a vector, no matter how much you blow it up, it's always going to look crystal clear, where as if you, if you saved as a, a GIF or a JPEG, there's always a point where it's going to start looking pixelated and look kind of ugly. So that's available, but it's only with the paid versions. The mind map, I've been playing around with this, and right now in the beta, the 20, XMind 2013 beta that I've got, it's not letting me export to these features. So I can't really show it to you, and I can't say as far as how it's, well it's going to work. This is how you get back to other programs or get back to a previous version of XMind. And the presentation, this one's not bad actually. It just has, it'll have the overall view, and then it goes section by section by section into... Into a, into a Microsoft PowerPoint presentation. If you've got any kind of, if it's a complicated mind map, this thing could get really big fast, but overall pretty cool. Something I do love is the ability to export to Microsoft Excel. And this is only available as also in a paid version, so I'll give you a quick idea of what it looks like. There are three different options you can use. I'll just show you one. And this is where it's actually, it takes the different levels. There's level one, level two, is there a level three? I think there is. Level three on some of them. And he'll take the first level and he'll just merge the cells in the different levels, the high rep levels. And as you go down, they'll have one cell for each of these things. It just I think this is a fairly neat way to display things. And if you have to export to Excel, this is better than just having to cut and paste. And it, it, that's okay, but not as nearly as nice as this. There are several ways to share. I've got a whole other video on just sharing. If you want to share on XMind, it's as simple as logging into the XMind system, uploading your image, and you can choose whether it's very similar to YouTube, where you can either share it with everyone, share it with only people who have the link, or share it with other XMind.net members who you've given specific permission to, to share. The other thing is you can share over a local network, which this is neat. It's a new feature to XMind 2013. It's a great step forward because you can at least share, but you can't do real-time collaboration. What it allows you to do is you can take something that you've saved on your computer and you can share it with, with other people in your either your home network or your business network, whatever local network you're on, not the internet, and you can share it with them. They can take it, they can save it, they can work on it, but when they work on it, there's no changes. That, the changes aren't going back to your version. It's just it's a, it's a, their own personal standalone version. So it's allowing you to share but not collaborate together. So there we go, the file menu on XMind 2013. If you found this video useful, get the cheat sheet. It's an XMind workbook filled with tutorials, videos, and links, and all sorts of cool stuff. Imagine that, using XMind to help you use XMind. You can get it by following the link below. All I ask in exchange is that you give my newsletter a chance. Thanks for watching.